Hello, good evening from Sydney, Australia. Welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Conversation in Isolation with Sonia Rossi. And today we're joined by a very good friend of mine in Italy called Sonia, just like me. So tonight's episode is with Sonia and Sonia. <laughs> okay, I'm going to invite her now. Okay. Ah, here it is. All right. Sonia in Torino. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Can you just check? I'll just check the volume. The volume up. I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Check my volume too. Okay. Yeah. I Looks like a nice. This morning. I completely like, just forgot about this hair appointment that I made three weeks ago. <laughs> Don't worry. And no they worries. Messaged me, they messaged me. They're like, hey, it's Francesca. We'll see you soon. I'm like, my girls were still asleep. I'm like, All right. Oh my God, we have an appointment. <laughs> no worries. Look, time's not a time's not an issue at all. What what time is it now in uh, Italy? It's noon. Sorry. Noon. Noon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And what's the weather like? Because I know that in Australia we're going into winter, but in Italy you're going into summer. We're supposed to be going into summer. The last couple of days. <laughs> have been torrential downpour every single day. It's been cold. It's just wow. weird. It, my husband's like, it's like November. I mean, it's really? Okay. We had, so we had to pull out sweaters and yeah, you know, layer, put your socks on, don't walk around in the house. Oh, no. So today it's beautiful. <laughs> there's no rain today. I don't think there's any rain in the forecast for the next couple of days. So we should be fine now. And it's supposed to warm up tomorrow as well. So. And That's pretty good. Get that summer, that summer weather we've been great. Doing. Absolutely. So Sonia Casaneda Piacente is a friend of mine who lives in Torino, which is a city in the north of Italy, where I used to live as well. And in fact, we we met there. The last time yeah. I saw you was not long ago, actually, yeah, just a few months. Ago. <laughs> and then look how everything's changed since then, huh? I know. It's just been I know. It's crazy. crazy. That's so tell me something. Tell, me, tell tell me a little bit about you. What's your What's your story? <laughs> okay, well, my story. Um, so I am a Texan. I like to describe myself Texan first, American second, because you know okay. we, we Texans are a little bit proud of our state and our history. So I like to say I am Tex Mex. Yes. So my family Tex -Mex. is yes, my family is Tex-Mex. I was born in Texas in Dallas. Um, my mother and my grandmother were all born there. My father was born in Mexico. Um, so my family is Mexican heritage. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm Tex-Mex. I lived there almost all of my life, except for the two years I spent in Utah at school. And then I okay. met Carlo um, in 2006. When he came, okay. when he went to um, Fort Worth for work, he was working for Lockheed Martin, and that's where we met and started oh. dating. And then soon after, we got married. It was a very quick engagement. Um, and then in <laughs> 2009, um, he had to come back. So I have been here since January of 2009. Wow, long time. That was, very time. Long. That was 11 years ago. Yeah. I can't believe it. Wow. <laughs> In in Torino in the north, and it's it yeah. must be very different to to Texas. Obviously, I mean, it it's is, completely different. It's very different, but at the same time, I can't believe I came to the one place that's more humid than Texas. And oh, uh, of course, my luck that would happen because yeah. he, kept, <laughs> he kept telling me, "Oh, Texas is so dry," and I'm like, "It's so humid." Then I come here, and I'm like, "Yeah, it's humid." I went home. Mm. And literally, it was like desert air, and I'm like, ah, oh, now I know what you're talking about. It is, it is so much more <laughs> humid here. I could not believe it. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so talking about, obviously, you know, 
everything that's been happening in the last few months have been crazy since mm -hmm. the beginning of the year, especially in, in Italy because COVID, let's say the cases started to appear in Italy sooner than Australia and other countries. Um, how, how did it go for you? When, when did it start in Torino, cases started to appear? And how did you realise this was happening and this was going to affect your, your life as well? February 22nd. And that is a wow. day that I cannot forget because it's Elisabetta's birthday, my second daughter. And right. That, and yeah. that night um, is when they, when we heard on the news, uh, the first cases of COVID were confirmed in Italy. Oh, in wow. the Milan. So that, mm. that's one day that I'll never forget because we had, wow, some, wow. Friends, we had some friends visiting us that uh, came from France and they came to spend the weekend here with us. And we were worried because their baby had a fever and we were just worried now that COVID had been found in Italy, were they going to be able to fly back home to France? Right. So after that, we, we just thought, well, beforehand, we were like, it's like the flu. Wash your yeah. hands, you know, make, don't get too close. Mm -hmm. And we'll all be okay. Just wash your hands, wash your hands. That's what we all heard in the days. Yeah leading up to it and the days soon after uh, those first few mm. weeks that's all we heard just, it's like the flu just wash your hands it's no big deal and it wasn't until about may the first, the first few days of i mean sorry not may march um march when yes. when they started pushing school back because first it was like okay uh, well, we have kind of on a vacation um so we're just gonna postpone school and not do school the, that following week and we'll come back to right. school on the 27th, I think it was a couple of days after. Then it was, oh, we'll take that week off and we'll start in March. Then it was, oh, no, we're going to start. Before. They just kept pushing the dates. And it was yeah. the first few days in March and I realized, you know what? We're not going to be going back to school until at least after Easter. So right. Okay. So I just realized. And as it started yeah. getting closer to Easter, and I'm like, no, we're done with school. It just, it just <laughs> got to the point where I'm like, Direct. but. Yeah. Clean the backpacks, just pack them up, put them in the basement because we're not going to need them until September and they're just taking up space here. <laughs> so you predicted it when you realized that getting towards Easter, things weren't improving at all. You were just starting to yeah, think, you know, well, school's finishing in June. Saying, they just kept saying, if our numbers improve, if, if. But we kept seeing numbers go up and I'm like, yeah. I don't really think we're going, I'm like, I'm calling it, we're not going to go back to school. And, yeah. and even when they said, oh, we'll probably go back in May, it was always if. If, if yeah. The cases go yeah. down. And, yeah, so it was like, just yeah. early, Mar early March is when I realized I was hopeful. I really was hopeful. I'm like, no, 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 okay. we're going to go back. We're going to go back. And by the time they pushed it back the third or fourth time, I'm like, no, we, we're not going mm. back. I, I guarantee we're not coming back anymore this school year so yeah it was hard it must must have been hard to get used to this idea of of not having these kids at school and having to to do home schooling with them right as mm -hmm. well and getting into that yeah. and gradu gradually realize look they're not going back to school and and i have to teach them teach them or help them at, at home yeah as they're different ages yeah wow so how how's homeschooling been for you because i know you have three children Yes. And they're all different ages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, at the beginning, at the beginning, when we were still hopeful that they'd go back, they just gave them busy work. It was like, okay, re this is a review. They've already done it. So I thought, okay, no problem. I gave them mm -hmm. the work and I thought, okay, like everybody else, I'm going to use this downtime to, you know, deep clean the apartment. And I couldn't <laughs> even do that with the work that they had to do. It was like, mom, I have a question. Mom, I don't understand. Oh. So I literally mm. took me one day to clean a bookshelf. I thought, this is not going to work. <laughs> this isn't going to work. But uh, yeah. as, the, as the days and weeks went by, the, I have to say that it's the school, at least my kids' school, um, really did, um, they did the most that they could. They put all of the work okay. on the lines. The teachers started yeah. doing Zoom calls. And... It actually made it a little bit easier knowing that, um, okay, one child's teacher was going to work on this material here. 
So I'm like, okay, yeah. you don't have to do that because you're going to do that in class with your teacher. Let's work on this. Yeah. Let's do the easy stuff first and then, you know, dedicate some other time here. Um, mm. so it, it was, on that aspect, it was fine. But then, mm. you know, I have my little one who's in first grade. She was so mm. excited to be in school. So it was harder on her because she just yeah. missed out on this whole school experience. So I'm having to sit there and, you know, remind her her, her letter writing and pronunciation and go over the rules of grammar of, you know, chi mm. and che, but then there's the, the magic Fatina Aka. She goes in the <laughs> middle, she likes to hold hands, so then it's ki and ke. And so, but then, I mean, the teacher mm -hmm. did an amazing job and sending us YouTube videos and everything, but it was just hard mm. to like, reinforce it. But I gotta say yeah. that I did learn a lot. Oh, that's good. So, <laughs> I learned some of these grammar rules that I never learned because I learned Italian just by ear. And so it's, right. it's nice actually to be able to sit down and understand why this pronunciation is the way it is. And Interesting, isn't it, to see? But you saw behind the scenes what goes on at school, and yeah. especially Italian. They're in Italian schools, right? So they're learning yes. Italian grammar and everything connected to Italian. Yeah. So you're able to to see what it was like yeah, close exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, first grade. Wow, first grade is, is such an important year, isn't it? And to have mm -hmm. that the last few months taken away. So even let's say graduation or how would you say end of end of school year? Yeah. Parties and all of that. That hasn't happened, that was right? All it was all done via Zoom. It was, right. So it was, you know, science experiments in the kitchen and, yes, class group <laughs> chats with, you know, learning how to do songs. And then parents came in, to, in the chat to say goodbye to the teacher. And, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, wow. it was hard. It was hard, but we made mm. it through it. And it was very emotional. Each teacher had a little something to say about the kids, about the school year. And I gotta say, it was, yeah. very, it was very moving because it was like pictures and slideshows and videos. And I'm oh, like, how I mean, nice. in the background going, it's not supposed <laughs> to be like this. You know? We're yeah, I'm very really emotional. Just listening to you, I can it imagine. Was, it I can was imagine. very sad, but it was nice because every every single teacher, you know, left with the, with the uh, um, a beautiful sentiment of the, yes, of the school yep. year. And how much they miss but, the kids, and how how they can't wait for September, and hopefully we can yeah. get back to class. Abs yes, let's hope so. Let's hope so yeah. because things have. Do you think? Do you see things? Well, it's hard to say calming down. It's really impossible to say that in Italy. But do you think that things will improve over the summer? Or you know, it's hard I would, to say. I would hope so. Our numbers are really mm. good. Um, every day, I, I don't keep up with the news as much anymore because it just yeah. kind of depresses me. My anxiety goes up. I start to feel like I have <laughs> symptoms. But uh, I do yeah. I look at the numbers every night, and our numbers are steadily down. It's around 300 cases a day. Um, wow. Our, the death rates are still very low. Here in Pimonte, um, the other day, mm. we, had, we only had two new cases and zero deaths. So, I mean, things are looking okay. great here in Piemonte. Uh, Lombardia mm. is still, the numbers are still high from what I understand. Yeah, but overall, that's the main. Our numbers, are, our numbers are still low overall. So, I mean, people are doing whatever they can. Everyone's going to the store with masks. Social distancing. Depends yeah. on where you go. <laughs> you gotta say, you get the playground downstairs. There's full of kids every night. No one's wearing a mask. Mm. I'll tell you the truth. No one's wearing a mask. But if you go to the one year of the school, everyone's in a mask. So it's right. Not, so it depends on where you go. Yeah. It depends on who your comp you and your company. I mean, if you go mm. hang out with one group of people that don't want to wear masks, then chances are you probably won't either because you don't want to be the other one right. out. Right. But if you go to mm. somewhere else where everyone's doing it, maybe you'll do it too. It just depends. Yeah. But, I mean, it's also not mandatory when you're out uh, outside. Just when uh, it's not group. okay. No, right. If right. there, if there becomes a large group, then they do ask that you wear a mask, but it's not mandatory. However, in stores okay. and everything, um, it is mandatory. So, right. So wow. Fifty people, mm, fifty going on there. But I do, I do feel hopeful um, because you know, mm. a lot of the people that I'm talking to, a lot of my friends, they're not in a rush to get back out. I, right. I, I spoke yeah. to a friend the other day. 
who works at a grocery store and she says that, you know, she's talking to people who work in hospitals and everything and, you know, they they still see a few people coming in for symptoms, but they, you know, she's like, we're yeah. still treating people. Um, yes. So a lot of people are still cautious and are not wanting to go out. I've been trying to get together with friends and they're kind of like, well, let's see. And I'm like, yeah, you can't do it that's anymore. the other thing. I, mean, I need, I need, I need people. I need to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start socializing again. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. That's another phenomenon that I've been reading about is, is now that we, we, like cases are slowly reduced, you know, going down and people are starting to go out more and socialize. There's also this fear, this psychological kind of caution and not really wanting to go out as much. So mm -hmm. you're used to staying home and you're kind of scared as well. So it's, it's hard to just jump back into normal yeah. life as before. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's really impressive that you, you managed to, to do all the homeschooling for so long. <laughs> Was three months. It was, I really, it was hard. <laughs> As a teacher work. myself, I, I really I really admire you with three children of different ages. They're close in ages, obviously, but different classes. Yeah. 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 First grade, second grade, and fourth grade. So right. they all needed some kind of guidance. And yeah. it was it was hard because I tried to balance the schedule of you know, housework, which I said, forget it. <laughs> I'll just get done on the weekends or whenever I can. But it was like, school yes. work, okay, but then I still need to go out and get some shopping done. Then they still need yeah. that, you know, be, they needed to be entertained. We need to go outside. And mm, it was absolutely. Hard to, it it's, was it's, hard to find that balance. And then when those yeah. days when we were in actual lockdown, it was probably, the, Oof. it was horrible because they couldn't, they couldn't leave. I could at least yeah. even go to the grocery store. My husband was yeah. home at work. He was home from work for three weeks, but then he was able to turn, return to the office. So we were able to at least get out and do what yeah. we needed to do. The kids, though, had to stay home. I couldn't take them to the market with me. The only place they could play was literally downstairs next to the dumpsters. Right. That was as right. far I remember as we were you able to go. Posting on Instagram about that, and I was... Uh, must have been so hard. I mean, the first, especially March, I think it was March, April, wasn't it? That was the worst the actual lockdown, which in Australia, we, we didn't quite get to that because we could still go out to get the shopping, go to the doctor. It wasn't as strict. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that they couldn't go to the park or just go and play with it, you know, it was really serious lockdown in, yeah. in, in Italy. So, you it's, know, yeah. it's depressing because it's we do have a park downstairs that you know, we look at our door from our balcony. So it was just sad yeah. not to see anybody there. There was, you know, they yeah. put tape around the entrances of the playground, not even the dog park. You couldn't go into the dog park either. My neighbor has a dog who's fairly oh. large and um, that dog went, in, went into depression. I'll say it. The, Ooh, she yeah, imagine. The, because she was used to walking so, so much before, before the lockdown that they were yeah. only, we were only able to go 200 meters from our house. I mean, she, my neighbor wow. got stopped by the Carabinieri because they had been following her because she went more than 200 meters. Oh, my goodness. She's like, wow. So they were actually. She was in the median too. So she wasn't like on the sidewalk. She was in the median, in the grass. There was no one else. And they were like, Signora, you've gone too far. You, we've been following you. You've gone more than 200 meters. You need to go back. Oh. And so she's like. There's no one around. She's like, my dog needs wow. some exercise. Yeah, everyone, everyone. I, I've I've realized that everyone has been really respecting those that strict lockdown. They really did, and, and isolation in general. I just think everyone's been so good in Italy, yeah. uh, in Turin. All, all, all my friends and family, they've all been rigi religiously, you know, respecting those those oh, strict yeah. rules. And thank goodness, because otherwise, you know, who knows what have, what would have happened. You know, it's, yeah. defi it's definitely paid off, and that's what people need to remember. You know, it's not over. Just because the weather's not yeah. here, we have, they, re you know, loosened up the restrictions. Um, gyms are opening up. Pools are opening up now. I think cinemas as well. They're going to start opening up oh. soon. So we've, hmm. so everyone's pretty much up and running again. But, you know, just the other, this last night, I got a reminder from the school group saying, okay, in the school uh, end of year evaluations are coming up next week. We have to go pick them up. 
you know, they said, don't forget, you know, only two teachers, yes. only one parent, no kids, you have a mask. The uh, Bideli will be at the school with hand sanitizer. They will escort you here. Right. Like, this is not over, you know, just because uh. restrictions are loosened doesn't mean that, that COVID is over. It's not. So it's not. They are, it's a bit, a bit of a thing. A breather now, right? A breather to, yeah. to actually do exercise outside and go out a bit more, but it's not keeping in mind social distancing and, and all, all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. So going back to, to this isolation period that you, you've been through with your family, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that it's changed your, obviously it changed your lifestyle dramatically. Uh, do you think it's also changed your, your mindset? Like, has it helped you think in a s slower kind of way or has it just been really super busy? You know, our, I think a little bit, it was always been slow. I mean, we, we don't do a lot of things that try to keep us busy. The girls, we keep busy on the weekends just because my husband does um, mm. like for the girls to stay active. So they did have tennis and yeah. swimming. Um, but I think he realized how busy that made a whole family just on one day. Right. And so he, mm. he just kind of realized, you know, I, I like having this weekend day to like wake up in a relaxed no, you know, in a relaxed way, yeah. have breakfast and then get our day started. And so right. when we do go back, we'll just have them do one activity on a Saturday and that's it. And we'll just keep it simple. Um, yeah. But yeah, just, my Saturdays were always so busy that I wasn't able to spend the time I wanted to with the kids during the right, week. You know, they right. were at school, then I they were with me at home. My husband was at work. We come home, we had dinner, and now with this, with everyone being at home together, it was nice. We actually had yeah to play games as a family. We played Uno. The girls started chess <laughs> again with Daddy, and it was just nice yeah. to have that family time again. So I think I think it made us mm. realize okay we. We definitely need to make more time together. Yes. I mean, we were, yeah. we were already doing it anyway, but it was just making sure it gets done. Yeah. So. Yeah, it sounds like it's it's kind of um, helped to spend more time together as a family in general over the weeks, you know, and appreciate that the, having, let's say, a slower schedule, maybe on a Saturday or on a weekend yeah. where you're running around, you know, yeah. just because slow, taking it easy. Yeah, yeah, spending we, time we together. We were always spending the Saturday together. We, we'd go to swimming. We would take them swimming, but we'd all go together as a family. So we'd have that one hour as a family. But it, yeah. it's just exactly that. It's just making sure that we don't pack the day with too many things to do. It's just take it, you know, right. really just slow it down and right. enjoy the day. Yeah. And, and actually enjoy being together rather than, okay, we have to do this and we have to do this, you know. Yeah. That's, That's like a general here. Yeah. Mm. I think everyone has been used to having a very hectic, busy lifestyle before this. And everyone has just had to kind of slow it down a little bit. This is what I've, I've been noticing talking mm -hmm. to people and, and put things in perspective. I think, is this, is this really important? Do I need to do this? Or right. maybe I can do something else and spend mm -hmm. more time with, with the kids. Yeah. 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 Do you think you, so you said, you think you might keep this routine Definitely. Once things go back to normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think we will. Mm. I think we will. It's, That's it's fun great. being able That's to, to sit and talk to the girls about, you know, what they want to do when they get older and actually just have conversations with them. You know, now they're getting, yes. they're getting older and I want to know what they want to do. <laughs> and I've, I've enjoyed watching your, looking at your posts on Instagram of your balcony. Sonia has an amazing balcony in... Torino, full of beautiful plants. So you've, you've been doing a lot of gardening, I think, right, during this lovely. time? Yes. Luckily, luckily, when the things started coming back up, um, the the flower booth at the market was able to open up as well. So I was able to grab a whole bunch of flowers and everything. But unfortunately, with all of the rain that we've gotten in the last couple of weeks, they've all uh, like, yes. somewhat died. So I need to... Oh, no. I'm trying to get them in the right. as much as possible and see if I can revive a few of them. So we need to work on that as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was, a nice, it was a nice project and a nice distraction. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine for the girls as well, helping you probably yeah. with that yeah. during the day. And, and Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you also have a blog, Sonia, right? You, you write do. a blog. 
I do. Now, I haven't written anything on my blog in about a year. It's just been okay. crazy. But actually, I was talking to a friend this morning, and I had told her, you know, tomorrow I'm taking the girls downtown. It's going to be our first visit in Centro since the lockdown. Oh, so okay. I'm like, I will, downtown, be, yeah. I will be taking pictures, and I will be, be blogging about that. So I'm, I'm returning to blogging uh, soon. Great, That's great. One of the things that I wanted to do during lockdown, but with homework it's been and, and things, it was right. really difficult. <laughs> But yeah, I, just trying to get by. I think some days I can I just can just imagine with with all the homework and everything and and all this Zoom, you know, all this time on Zoom is is a lot. It is. It is a lot. It's a lot. It was a lot. And then we also have uh, our church classes on Zoom as well. So it's like oh, we don't get, that's nice. Don't get a break on Sunday. We also have Zoom on Sunday. <laughs> Which is nice that must be that's, a, that's also another another community and other family that we also miss absolutely you know to be able to see people not just you know the school friends but just the people that you normally socialize with on the weekends or you know outside of school it's nice to see them there as well absolutely all all your communities and your groups that you that you usually used to to see every week Mm -hmm. just got completely yeah Yeah. cut out right and talking about, is there anything that you would let's say you you want to keep this habit of spending more time with the family, with the girls, at a slower pace? Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything that you would you can't wait to get rid of to throw out once life goes back to normal? Even though I keep saying life goes back to normal, but I don't know if it will. <laughs> I'm starting to think who knows the new normal. But is there any habit or any anything that happened during this these few months that you would just can't wait to throw out you know procrastination i'm so ready to stop procrastinating (laughs) oh there are so many things that we always said okay we're gonna do that soon we're gonna do that later and Mm. it never got done because of lockdown or you know just you know seeing the number of uh, of the deaths of covid go up especially in bergamo and seeing, oh. I, remember, I remember seeing the, oh, the um, that video of the guy who was flipping through the newspaper, and there was like six pages of obituaries. You know, I'm just like those are all pages. Like, yeah, there was like tons of tons of like six pages of obituaries in one, and that was just for one day. And I remember wow. how how horrible and how sad that was. That those people just had no idea that their 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 time here was going to be over so soon. Um, and yeah. then a friend of mine just lost her mother-in-law just all suddenly. And I just feel like, you know, between lockdown and, you know, COVID and the, what it does to your body, especially if you're at risk, yeah. you shouldn't postpone anything. Let's just do it now. That's right. And, Very wise. And just take that, you know, take every day that you can spend Spend it with your loved ones. Do what you want to do. Make the most of it because you know you don't know if you're gonna wake up tomorrow. And yeah. you don't want to live with a regret. You don't want to say, "Oh, I'll just do that next time." I mean, obviously, live live for today and plan for tomorrow, of course. But right, but time, it's like you know, just don't put anything off too much that you end up regretting that you never did it. Very wise. So, very right? true. So that's the one thing that I personally want to. To, to lose is that habit of mine of uh, just mm. procrastinating. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I think we, we, we didn't expect this to happen. I mean, even when I, I visited Italy last year on a quick family trip in December, and would, I would never have imagined this a few mm-hmm. months later. So you just take it for granted. You can jump on a plane, visit your mm-hmm. family, visit your friends, and come back, you know, especially if, if family's living far away. And now it's... Right. Everything's been at a at a standstill, and even for you with your family in in the United States, you know, mm-hmm. not knowing when you're going to see them again, right? And obviously, with what's happening in the United States, there's a lot of cases there as well. So, mm-hmm. just suddenly realizing how important life is and every day is, and we, I, I think I took it for granted pretty much. <laughs> My life's just, you know, yeah, yeah, but life is short, and in Italy. 
everyone's been exposed to so much uh, sickness and death just constantly in the news every day, every day. So mm -hmm. that I think that after a while it makes you really realise that, you know, this is, this is serious, this is happening. Mm -hmm. In Australia, it hasn't been that bad, obviously, but following the news around the world and in Italy, we've, we've been able to see um, how bad it was and how worrying, especially. Yeah. yeah. And so talking about connections during isolation, you, you managed to keep in touch with, with friends probably during yeah. the social media or calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did any um, of that change or...? No, I mean, we're, we're still keeping in touch. Um, my family and I, we did a few Zoom calls together. It's, right. You know, it's, it's a little difficult because we're in a different time zones, but we managed to do a family Zoom call together. But I am keeping in touch with uh, quite a few friends, mostly through Facebook, just messages yeah. and checking up on each other. A few of my friends were doing Marco Polo, which is fun. Um, oh, I'm not sure what that is. What's that? So Marco Polo is it's another messaging app, but it's video. So instead of like texting, oh, okay. videos to each other, and it's it's. I mean, you could do it like <laughs> that too. Yes, but it's just fun to another another app that a lot of people are using. So it's just mm -hmm. fun to have uh, you know wake up and see uh, I've got a Marco Polo from a friend of mine and and uh, just, just like a video, video kind of it's awesome. We're going back and nice. that's fun as well. Yeah. 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 And thinking about connection. So what, what kind of message would you, would you give other, other moms that have been through this experience of homeschooling and being at home with kids after your experience of this, what kind of message would you, or I would say just buy? take it one day at a time to get organized yeah. first, get organized and take it <laughs> one day at a time. <laughs> Right. Especially if you have more than one kid that you need to, you know, you need to to follow up with homework. You you've got to stay mm. organized. And there were there were yeah. a couple times where I completely forgot about class Zoom calls, and I had messages going, "Where are you? Um, we have class today." And I'm like, oh my God, "I dropped the ball somewhere." But um, oh, yeah. I think that's the one thing that that's helped. That is, um, you know, I had everyone on a calendar, and mm. all their homework was set up so that they know exactly where homework was and we just we really did just take it one day at a time and i'm like okay absolutely so we can do this and then we'll worry about tomorrow and yeah know, if you have something that's because due soon just do that first so that we don't have to worry about it you know and i tell my girls just because you're not at school doesn't mean school has stopped you still have to do these things right. you still have deadlines you know you have this project yeah. that is due on this day my oldest waited on one of her parties, so she waited until the night before. And at midnight, she came to the kitchen to start doing her work. And I'm like, no, that's not <laughs> how it works. <laughs> you right, right, right. You yeah. know yourself. Like, you mm. got your homework on Monday. Finish it by mm. Friday so you can have the weekend to play. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, also for them, I mean, it was, it was such a, it was kind of a gradual thing, wasn't it? It was, we're online, we're not going to school. How, you know, we're not sure how long this is going to last for. So it was a, it was a gradual getting used to it, I think, right, for everyone, especially for children, because they, they probably just expected to go back to school in the next week or so every, every week, as you said, because it kept getting postponed. So it was hard to probably just adjust to that, yeah. not knowing when they were going, going, to, going to go back to school. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, yeah. yes, because we, they kept saying, okay, we'll go back the following week. So I told the girls, okay, there's no school this week, so you're going to go back the following week. Okay. Well, there's no mm -hmm. school that week, but hey, there's some work that you need to do. It's review work, get it done so that when you go back to school, you can turn it in. Yeah. Okay. And so as as the deadline got pushed back, it was like, okay, well, you're still not going to school. Um, girls, you're probably not going to go to school. I'm sorry, girls, you're not going to be yeah. able to celebrate your birthday in school this year. There all right, that's school. another thing. Yeah. And so all three, of my oh. girls, all three of my girls celebrated birthdays during this lockdown. Oh. During this lockdown, wow! Yes. I know that they're all quite closely, they're quite close to their birthdays, aren't they? Yes. February, right? February. Uh, and... Two are in February, one in April. April. Oh and gosh! That, that was the hardest <laughs> because February twenty first was the last day they were in class, and then Elizabeth's birthday is the twenty second. And you know that in Italy, celebrating the birthday before the actual date is bad luck. So it's like that's okay, right. <laughs> you have to wait until you go back. Carlota, my youngest, mm. her birthday is the 25th. 
And that was, that was uh, on a Tuesday. So it was actually Carnivale that day. Right, right. Well, God, I'm like, I'm sorry, but Carnivale and all the, the Luna parks have been canceled because of the virus. They oh, can you imagine? So I'm like, I'm sorry, Carlota, you have a birthday. I'm like, but we will celebrate and you'll take all these things to your class the following week when you go back to school. And oh. they got pushed back and pushed oh. back. And I'm like, no one gets a birthday. So luckily, Valentina was able to um, celebrate with her classmates. Her teacher asked oh, for a list of birthdays, and they all mm. um, logged on to, to sing happy birthday to everyone who had a birthday. Oh, that's lovely. That's it. lovely. So that was nice. So teach, teachers tried to create, recreate the moment of the fun moment of celebration. That's good. Yeah. Well, well, and how the how, teacher did, yes. <laughs> how, well, the other, how did the, the girls cry? <laughs> right. How, how, did, how did the girls cope with this? this time did you notice a change in them and and also for you from the beginning of isolation to towards the end did their attitude change towards it getting used what? to it or they always no mm. i noticed I, they grew they really did grow up a lot and i think it was wow. the fact that they know they knew already ahead of time what covid was because they had talked wow. about it in school in december when we first heard the case in in december China. yeah when cases started oh, wow. in China, they learned about it and they would come home and say, mom, there's this new thing in China, this new sickness, and it's because a man ate a bat. And they say, you shouldn't eat um, you know, raw fish. You and daddy like sushi. Please don't eat any more sushi. Wow. In the beginning wow. it was, don't eat sushi, don't buy products made in China, uh, sanitize the products made in China. And then we realized, okay, that has nothing to do with COVID. But you do mm. have to be aware, you know, you do have to be careful with raw fish anyway, because that's just, yeah. that's just general rule. Um, so mm. people are already aware of coronavirus and COVID before it arrived yeah. here. And okay. So just, once, it, once it was here, they're like, oh, I can't believe it got here. I can't believe it came here. This is a dumb coronavirus. Mm. And, yeah, and of course. Like, that's what it is. Yeah, that's right. I think we all kind of didn't realize at the beginning that it would it would hit the whole world so so badly. We just we heard about it, but it was a vague, you know, there's a virus. What's going to happen? We're not sure. And then and then suddenly it started to affect everywhere, every country, uh, in smaller or bigger ways. Anyway, mm -hmm. well, this is great. Do you think? Do you, do you see, for example, in Torino, obviously things are improving slightly. People are starting to go out. Do you see that? Do you think life will go back to a semi-normal state or it will change while think, COVID is around? No, I think it will. It, it'll take about a, a year maybe because I don't see, I don't see us not, not having a mask. I, they're already saying in September I'll we're going back with masks. So mm. I think unless we find a vaccine or medication yeah. or that we know exactly how to stop it completely i think we're gonna we're gonna be in the same situation we're gonna have to you know stand in line at grocery stores and you know keep our distance um yeah maybe around i'm thinking maybe around the holidays we might need another reminder and it, it gets cold <laughs> and, and the flu comes back this season you know i think we'll have yeah. to that's the thing do another mm. another mini lockdown to avoid the spread of the flu and COVID. Yeah. Um, because I, otherwise, I, I don't know. Mm. I mean, mm. We may do, it may just, you know, keep low now that we're all wearing masks anyway. Or they may say, okay, right. now it's flu season. Um, now you have to wear a mask, you know, throughout the winter time mm. to avoid right you know, spreading to germs. avoid it so who knows but i mean i do think we'll get back to it somewhat normal but it won't be anytime soon yeah and especially with winter coming back you know and and the cold weather and flu season as you said people might start to get sick again and mm -hmm. it's like unless, we, unless we get a vaccine mm -hmm. then it's yeah yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's like your friend gary has said in the first episode you know he made a good point that mm -hmm. you know after World War II, you know, people didn't think that, you know, life was ever going to be the same. But, you know, we evolved. We, we moved forward and 
and life did go back to normal. Same with, you know, that's right. In, when it was, you know, 100 years ago during the Spanish flu, you would see pictures um, of people wearing masks and, you know, like, right. the, you know, the gas masks and everything. People, we went, we eventually went back to normal. It's, it's just human evolution. We'll go back to normal. It's just going to take a while. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, it's, it's been fantastic chatting to you and I know, I catching up you. about all of this. I know. I know. I just, <laughs> it's great. Oh, ciao, Alessandro. One of my friends in Torino is watching. Oh, Kiss it off. A lot of our friends are watching. <laughs> That's great. My friend, Thank my you. friend Thank Rosa from Texas is watching. She just had a baby boy. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Hi to all our listeners. Thank you for thank you for joining us tonight. It's a it's a live between Australia and Italy, so that's yeah. really exciting. Sonia and Sonia, that's like yeah. how cool is that? <laughs> Sonia, double double power. Yes, <laughs> great. Um, yeah. So, do you have any any anything you want to anything else you'd like to to mention or anything interesting that happened during? Isolation or funny oh, story. Gosh, let's see. Interesting. Playing next to the dumpsters. At one point, my husband was so like, he had cabin fever, so he went up on the roof to do exercises. He jumped <laughs> over the jump rope and like push ups and whatever. No, it, it's been hard <laughs> though. He, uh, during the yeah. time he was home too, he was on call in our bedroom. I had someone here in the balcony, I had someone in the kitchen, someone in the other bedroom. And the people downstairs started doing uh, renovations. So that was no. <laughs> that right was, during that. That was a lot of fun because then um, that was after um, it was funny because they lock they did lock down, but they're like, okay, these stores need to lock down, and you know everyone needs to go home. And it's like a couple weeks later, oh no, our teachers are still up. Now these people need to you know stop working. Cases are still up now. These people need to stop working. So the lockdown was gradual. So for a while, and I'm like, I thought we were in lockdown, but yet you have moving right. companies still going and construction work still going. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So finally, when they stopped lockdown and they said, okay, we can start going back up, the construction came back up. And uh, <laughs> I told the girls, and I'm like, okay, tell your teachers. I had to email all the teachers. I'm sorry. As of, you know, Oh, the, the noise. The everything, we have a lot of noise, and it's, I'm like, we can't close the windows and everything because it's literally underneath us. It's the, the floor underneath us. The apartment right. right under me. So like, okay, thank yeah. you. They're like, gracias, señora, gracias. Um, but one <laughs> teacher during the, the class assembly for the parents, yeah. the, one teacher commented about the noise and how una bambina Blah blah blah. Si sentaba papá que parlaba de sorelle. I'm like, yeah, it's me. Sorry, I didn't do anything about it. I told no, exactly. Them, because I told my kids, put your microphone on mute. But then you have the teachers going, no, don't mute your microphones. We want to hear everything, or I will unmute you whenever. Yeah. But I'm like, then don't complain about the noise. I'm sorry. Exactly. Yeah, background noise is is it impossible to avoid it. They need to also talk to the teachers and the other students. They can't just be muted the whole time. Yeah. And God. Oh, wow. Well. Muted everyone. Or, and I'm like, okay, the, the noise yeah. is less now. So, you know, you can keep your microphone on if you have to. But, you know, put some headphones yeah. on if you can. And yeah. That was, that was hard because my husband would talk and I'm like, shh, I'm like, we've got a call and we can hear you and you need to be quiet. And girls don't scream because someone's on a call. And, Oh my goodness! Oh, everyone was busy on on their computers. Everyone's and, busy, and then I'm oh. like in the hallway, going, "What do I do now?" <laughs> okay. like, there have been times, about once a week, I had all three of the girls connected at the same time in the same hour. So I was like, wow. "Someone's on a computer, someone's on a phone, someone's on my phone," and I'm literally in my hallway, going, "What do I do? What what do I what do I do? Where do I go? Where and do I, I hide?" I don't want to hide in the back. <laughs> Wow, well, I think I think you've just been amazing. I've been following your your Instagram stories and videos of life during isolation and how you manage. And I think I think you've you've done really well. So I think I think all the parents did Congrats. amazing during this time. It wasn't yeah. easy, but I have to give kudos to the parents who also had to still work. 
during that time because right. I don't understand how they were able to, you know, go to work and still follow their yeah. kids and, you know, lessons right. and everything. So, or working from home and managing children. Yeah, oh, yeah, gosh. Working from home, parents still having to, to work, who work at the hospitals and grocery stores and everything, you know, and then having to come yeah. home and follow their kids in their assignments. And I mm -mm. I, yeah, I'm home with three kids, but there are other people who have, you know, who still have to go to work and then come home and do right, the right, right. doing here. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Thank you so much, Sonia, for checking the time. It's been lovely talking to you, and I, I hope that talking to you. I miss you. <laughs> Me too. Have you have you seen Rosemary at all? I have. Lately, or... Actually, we've gotten together. Uh, we got together a couple times right as, um, after they re they lifted some of the restrictions. We went and got some gelato together. Nice. And uh, we mm. actually ordered we ordered some masks together from our friend Cecilia and in Liverpool. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, that's lovely. So uh, once they come in the post, I will drop them off to her. But I wrote her yesterday or the other day, and I say, okay, it's time for a play date again. I'm like, I think fantastic. I think it's time. You but can no, start. To... You no, know, we've we've kept in touch. We've had um, video calls. Um, I've also helped her out because she she and her husband and the kids they didn't leave their house at all during lockdown. Right. Luca, right. Luca would go do the grocery shopping or they had food delivery. So they were literally yeah. at home in lockdown. Whereas, you know, Carla and I would go out. She, she never left the house. So I would help her. And yeah. if I was going to the market, I'd pick some things up for her and drop them off at the house. That's she great. helped me out with printing homework before our printer arrived. So, you know, we've... Amazing. Helping each other out as much as yeah. possible. Yeah. And actually, yeah, that's that a lot of people have. A lot of parents have done that with mm -hmm. other parents. Um, mm. only to, to keep in touch, but also because we know that there were families who didn't have a printer at home, who didn't have tablets. And so, you know, a lot of the schools had to coordinate all that and a lot of parents helped out with yeah. that as well. So. Ah, uh, right. Also stationary and all sorts of things that, that mm -hmm. they could have needed. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. No, we, we've been keeping in touch and keeping each other informed of, I found flour at Conan. Oh, I found yeast at Cry. <laughs> Because that's the thing. I am at Cry. They have yeast. Do you want any? <laughs> How many do I need to get you? <laughs> Helping each other out with the shopping because when when everyone went crazy buying all that all that stuff, oh my goodness, running out. Even with you know us and our neighbours, we helped each other find what we needed when we couldn't find it at the supermarket. Yeah. Oh, I've got L some. Luckily, Grandma found everything at Carrefour, so we we were fine. But it was getting to the point where I was getting low on yeast and I couldn't find any. So I had to yeah. tell my friend who works at Lidl, I'm like, uh, Mari, I'm getting kind of low. As soon as you get a delivery and there's yeast, I need three packs. And each pack has like six little bags in there. So I like... Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's why when I post on my Instagram, I'm like, don't even come at me for this. I'm like, I have been waiting literally a month for yeast. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So... Uh, well, well, I hope that better now. I hope that you guys have a yeah, <laughs> have a lovely summer ahead. I now that you're going into you. summer, that it gets warmer finally. Yeah, you guys are in, <laughs> coming into winter, so yeah, yeah. it's getting cold. It's crazy, yeah, it's getting cold <laughs> for y'all. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Cases, how are the cases in, in Australia? Oh, we're doing we're doing pretty well actually. We have uh, we had three or four cases I think this week in Sydney. But it's it's very very low, and in Victoria they had a few more. But it's it's really really low. Oh, that's good. In terms of population size, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I know New Zealand has been amazing. I think they they're COVID free. They were right. Yeah, they were. I think they were COVID free until a day or two ago, and then they've oh. had a few more cases. Ah, but, okay. But they're basically returning travelers that that come back mm -hmm. into the country, and then they're quarantined, and then, but yeah. Though I think everyone's done really well in Australia, social distancing. Mm -hmm. well, Absolutely. Good. Last three months, everyone's been really good. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> go back to semi kind of life, semi normal life. So we're just we're just hoping that we can go on vacation, can go to the beach. If not, That's we'll right. just we'll go to the mountains and enjoy the lakes here. Yeah. Have a bit of a holiday. In yeah. September. And see what yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, all the best, Sonia. It's been really, really all lovely right. talking, to, talking you. to you. Thank you. All right.
thank you for your time and okay we'll be in touch okay thank you everyone listening and following this episode of conversation in isolation with sonia castanera piacente from torino italy thank you so much <laughs> okay bye sonia ciao bye. thanks ciao everyone ciao. <laughs>